Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Effects Maniac. This is Sayed Mahmoud Amiri again, and uh, welcome to another Maya Effects tutorial and the part two of the Bifrost Basics training. So, in the last tutorial, I've uh, shown you guys how to use some of the basics of the Bifrost fluids inside of Maya, and I promise you guys that I'll be doing this uh, character dancing effect uh, in the next video. So, I'm here and I'll show you guys how to do this effect. So you've seen the main video and as you see in this video, we have a lot of crazy details in the simulation. It took uh, about like 20 hours and over 200 gigs of uh, uh, simulation cache size. But in this tutorial, I'm just gonna show you guys how to, how to basically set it up and then you can increase the detail as much as you want. So uh, the video that we're gonna be creating today is this one right here. So I'm going to play this and you can see that it's, it's, it's already looking nice. And uh, yeah, you know, the particles are emitting from the movement of the object and we, these white particles are actually the foam particles. And we've created a boundary. And the most important thing is that when these particles get off of this uh, area, they need to be deleted, otherwise it's going to be a lot of uh, cache size and stuff. So I'm going to show you guys how to set that up. So the first thing that you're going to do, and before we get into the tutorial, I just want to ask you guys something that like, I am trying my very best to create these uh, awesome high quality, uh, or at least how I think it is high quality tutorials for you guys. and. Um, I try my best always to come up with something that is not there and unique things and effects and awesome effects for you guys. And I don't ask anything in return. The only thing I'm asking is I'm I'm doing this for you guys. I'm doing this so you can be able to learn something and like take your skills to the next level. And the only thing I'm asking you is just take your time to share it with your friends. You know, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, do uh, consider subscribing and liking the videos because that's the only way you're going to support me. And the more you like the videos, the more it's going to show up to your YouTube recommendations so that more people can get the chance to be able to watch the videos and use it. And make sure to tell me what, what do you think about the tutorials and what do you want next. Uh, in the comment section so that's the only thing I'm asking in return and I will do my best to uh, you know keep up with uh, doing these awesome tutorials for you guys so enough talking let's get on with this tutorial so uh, the first thing you'll need is a character so usually I download it from Mixamo online so here's a website you can go there and you, you, you have different models that you can choose different characters and then you can go and choose different animations and then you basically download an FBX and you bring it to Maya. So uh, I've already downloaded one model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the folder. So I have this uh, swing dance. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it inside of Maya and uh, uh, just uh, minimize this. So I have this character right here. So usually it doesn't come up like this. Maybe it comes up like very big. So if you go here, yeah, I already have it in my scene. So if I take a new scene, I'm going to show you guys how it comes up usually. So I'm going to go back to the folder and just drop it into Maya. Um, actually, drop it in the viewport. And uh, you can see it comes up like this. So it's way big and bigger than the grid. So what you're going to do is you're going to create like an object, like a sphere. And I'm going to scale it up. And the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the rig, hold down shift and hit P. First select the rig and then select the sphere and then hit P to parent it. And then hit R for the sphere to scale. So it's basically they're parented. And then I'm going to select the sphere and hit H to hide it. So now we have our object scaled up in a proper size. And that's, that's, that's it for the scaling of the object. So the next thing I'm going to do is go into the time configuration and make sure for now it is 24 frames. So if I play this, you can see that this character is dancing like a swing dance or something. So uh, that is it for the animation. And uh, now it's time to set up our Bifrost uh, grid. So what I'm going to do is select this character and go into effects. And uh, if you haven't watched the previous tutorial and if you don't know the basics of Bifrost, I highly recommend you check out that tutorial first and then you come back here. So I'll put the link uh, in the upper corner of this tutorial so you can get there. 
it's just a previous tutorial so uh, then when you go to the FX tab you're going to go to the bifrost fluids and create an emitter uh, sorry a liquid and that's basically going to create a bifrost emitter from this so what I'm going to do is uh, if I play this you can see that's emitting but there are two problems they're not emitting continuously first and then it, it doesn't have anything to collide with so uh, first things I am going to create a cube and just scale it up and just uh, scale it the height down and then scale it up generally and then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this face and hit Control E and offset it like that and then just uh, shift drag it down so that we we kind of uh, yeah we can have it make sure it's touching his feet so it doesn't go up like that but just like touching his feet so that's that's the thing that I want and then you're going to scale it up generally so scale that up and that's it and scale it high so yeah all right, so now the other thing, as I've shown you in the previous tutorial, if you want this to emit continuously, what are you going to do is you're going to go to the Bifrost Emitter Props. If you don't have the Outliner, you can click here, or you can go to the Window, Outliner, and just uh, select this and go here and enable Continuous Emission. So when you do that and you're going to go and simulate, you can see that the particles are actually emitting continuously from the object and you can see that you know they're actually going kind of wild so which I think is nice but you can actually control you know how much of the velocity of the particle uh, the object sorry is the particles uh, or are the particles uh, inheriting in other words how fast are the particles moving uh, based on the motion of the object so you can you can go ahead and, and, and change that as well so um, if you go here into the emitter props there is a conversion and here is the velocity scale so this basically controls how much uh, of the you know uh, how much of the object's velocity you want the the particles to get so if it is getting too much if you if you go here it's actually going to give you a description, you know, controls the proportion of velocity that's inherited from the emitters. So that's what it's saying, you know, from the emitters animation. So if it's one, it's going pretty wild. So if I decrease this to like 0 0.6 in all the three directions, uh, then you can see that uh, if I if I go back here, it's not going to go as wild because we've actually decreased the amount of uh, velocity of the particles that are taken from the objects so and now it's not flying or shooting out which is uh, which I think is nice so that's that's the thing for that and the other thing is right now these particles are actually going through the floor as you can see so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the bifrost grid and shift select the object and I'm going to go into the bifrost fluids and uh, select collider so what it's going to do is actually set that as a collider for the bifrost particles and fluids so that ground is going to now collide with the particle uh, with the particles yeah so let's see so right now you can see that the particles are actually colliding with this floor so what i'm going to do is just like pause this and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the thing about this. And the other thing that I wanna I wanna show you guys is that, like, uh, even if you didn't have this uh, big grid, like if this was like small, right? Uh, if this was like this, if this was like small, and it was like, if you squeeze this down, you know, it was just like this. So what would happen is that the particles would actually emit. But then as soon as they get off of this grid, this emitter, which they will in just a few frames, they'll just go down and, you know, they'll continuously, uh, they'll continue to go down because that's like how the motion of the particles are. And then they're going to go down and Maya doesn't know that they're not supposed to go down. So they're just going to keep calculating as, as much as they go to infinity. So that is not what we want. So the thing that uh, the solution for this is that 
um, you need to create something called a kill plane. So if, if you go here, select this Bifrost liquid, go into the Bifrost fluids, and then there's a kill plane. So here is the kill plane, and if I select this and like scale it up, it doesn't matter if it is big or small, but the thing that matters is its Z position. If it's here, then the particles will be deleted as soon as they touch the surface. So if I go ahead and uh, you know play this, you can see that it's actually on the floor. But the, the the main thing is that as soon as the particles you know uh, hit below the surface, this plane, they're going to be deleted. So that's the benefit. So the particles won't go out to infinity. They're just going to be deleted once they get off off like bottom of this surface. So you don't have to worry about the particles going off of this area so that's actually that's actually and so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to uh take a preview of this a play blast and uh as you can hear from my voice i've actually gotten a flu uh just recently you know so i'm, I'm just trying my best to to tell you guys everything and not pretend like nothing has happened but it did so what I would do is just right click and play blast and make sure that it is like 1920 by 1080 scale 1 quality 100 save to file and just like play blast so yeah I'm gonna set this to play blast and I'm gonna wait till this is done and I'll be back all right so the um, play blast is not finished I just simulate like uh -huh, like 70 frames but the most important thing is you can see that as soon as these particles get to this point and hit this uh, kill plane they're just going to be deleted so they're not just like there right so they're going to be deleted and and that's 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 what we want so that's that's going to be pretty useful and then i'm just going to make this large again just for you know that was just like for for showing purposes so I'm just going to make it big, no matter what. All right. So the next thing is I will just uh, add some foam to this. So I'll just select this one and just go into Bifrost and Foam. And the thing is, you can go ahead into the foam and basically, you know, uh, you can you can you can uh, select the you can change the point size and the display and other stuff. And then you can go and basically, you know, change the amount. This is the emission rate, like how much um, of these uh, foam are being emitted. So if it's too much, then you can see, you can see, like if I if I create a little uh, um, preview for this again, I'm just going to go do another play blast and see how it looks. But then if, if it was too much, then we would just like decrease it. So just play blast and I will be back when this is done. All right, so let's see here our preview. So I'm just going to hit escape. It's only been like 50 frames, but you can see that we do have a lot of foam particles. That is uh, crazy dense, you know. So what I'm going to do is like, I'll just uh, decrease the number of uh, foam particles. I'm just going to go here. Maybe 1,000 is a little too much, so maybe like 500, 500, like 50, 500, no, 550. So that'll be it. Now if I go back here, then I can just do another like play blast, and that's going to be basically it, you know, that's going to be it for this tutorial. So it was a pretty simple, pretty simple effect. So you can just go ahead and like do the whole thing as a, as a play blast and you know uh, play around with the different settings different character movements and stuff and enjoy the process uh, at the end so that was uh, that was it for uh, today's tutorial so I hope you guys enjoyed it hope you learned something from it and uh, if I've just missed anything or you want me to do anything else with this so just tell me in the comments and as always I would appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and like the videos and uh, you know support me so that I can keep making these awesome tutorials for you guys so this was the today's tutorial and until the next one enjoy working